Welcome to the Level Up English podcast, the best place to come to practice the English language, learn about the British accent and culture. With me, your host, Michael Lavers. Hello, English learners, and welcome back to the Level Up English podcast. My name is Michael, and I'm going to be talking today all about phones, all about using your smartphone, maybe smartphone addiction, using your phone to learn English, and all these kinds of topics. I actually got a really nice message from one of you guys. I don't remember what I did. I feel like I may. Uh, my memory is so terrible. I helped a student in some way. Maybe it was something to do with the membership or something like that. I cannot remember what I did. But in exchange for my help, they were very kind and they sent me a huge long list of topic ideas. And I actually really liked a lot of them. And this was one of them. So if you're listening to this, thank you very much, mystery person. This topic of smartphones was one of their requests. And I thought it was a great one. So I'm going to talk about this today and yeah, see what we can come up with. Probably lots of vocabulary and ideas in this episode. If anything is difficult for you to follow while I'm talking, remember you are more than welcome to check out the transcripts on the Level Up English membership page. So if you go to levelupenglish.school, click on the members button at the top, you can become a member and get access to transcripts and group lessons and private podcasts and many, many kinds of things like that. Chances to practice your English, you know, so feel free to do that if that sounds interesting for you. And a nice bonus is it also helps support the podcast, you know, without the membership, I probably wouldn't be able to continue doing what I'm doing because I don't really make any money from the podcast. So it would be nice if you guys could support me there as well. It's a nice way to say thank you and it makes me very happy too. Okay, let's get right into the topic. Let's not delay any further because I don't think I have any more news right now. So let's start with my thoughts on using a smartphone to learn English, you know, using language learning apps, for example. So I should mention that I think it's important to do whatever you find helpful. So I'm not going to sit here and say, don't use smartphones or use smartphones or whatever, because really language learning is fairly personal. And I think you should just do what you find helpful for you and what you enjoy. If you love using your phone, you find you learn a lot from it in language learning, then go ahead, keep using it, have fun. That's totally fine. Personally, for me, I try my best to reduce my phone usage. I don't really know why. I've never really had a problem with phone addiction before. I don't have much social media on my phone and stuff like that, but I, I just don't like the idea of becoming too dependent on my phone. I suppose some areas of life, I think it's better when it's more difficult. Like for example, when I am walking on the street, I try to resist the urge to search on Google Maps because I think it's much more fun to use and practice my sense of direction and find out where I want to go based on my own, you know, brain. And maybe even ask someone, excuse me, where, where can I find this place? And it's like a nice small interaction you can have with a stranger. And it kind of makes me sad that phones have pretty much killed those interactions. In fact, it's weird, the other day, a man came up to me and asked me, excuse me, do you have the time? Oh, I, I told him, yeah, half past four. But my initial reaction was, what, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to steal something from me? Are you trying to attack me? Like, why are you asking me for the time? I was very suspicious. And I don't think I was wrong to be suspicious because who doesn't have the time anymore? Everyone has a watch or a phone at least, right? But maybe he ran out of battery or... I don't know, maybe he doesn't have a phone, but it really took me off guard. Maybe you can let me know in the comments, when was the last time someone asked you for the time? Not a common thing these days, anyway. But yeah, so I don't really use any language learning apps. 
on my phone. I do on my computer. I prefer on my computer. I feel like my computer is more of a space for learning. I just think on, on my phone, there's too many distractions. It's too easy to swipe and do something else. But something about being on my computer, my mind is more ready to learn when I'm sat at my desk rather than just, you know, lying in bed or something. But what I will do is maybe every morning I will do some listening. I'll watch a YouTube video, practice listening to Japanese or Chinese, and I've got two really good dictionary apps on my phone. So when I hear a word I don't quite recognize, I might just go, oh, let's have a quick search. And I search on dictionary and go, oh, that's interesting. But then the important thing is I will also incorporate this into my speaking sessions as well. So if I learn a word that I think could be useful for me, I will ask my teacher, like, can you help me practice this word? And we will make some example sentences together. So it's not just learning on the phone, it's also incorporating with the rest of my study as well. I also use a dictionary app for English, which I find really, really handy. I think the one I use is just dictionary.com. You can pay to remove the adverts, which I haven't done yet, but I might do that at some point in the future. And yeah, it's great. It's got definitions. It's got synonyms, thesaurus, example sentences. It's pretty handy dictionary. So I use that even as a native speaker when I want to learn some new English words. But it's never about searching randomly. I don't know if anyone does that. It's if I see a word in my day-to-day -day life, I will search for it on the dictionary. And that's really the best way to learn, I think, because if you don't make the effort to look up a word, how are you going to keep it in your memory? How are you going to know what it means? Yeah, I think it's really good to be clear on the definition of a new word. But yeah, besides that, I rarely study on my phone. Really, the only thing I use it for is podcasts. So I listen to language, learning podcasts, podcasts in Japanese, to practice my listening. So I guess that's why or how you're listening to me now. Most of you are listening through a podcast app on your phone. And yeah, it's a great thing to do. You can take me with you in your pocket. Um, that sounds weird. Um, on, the, on the way to work, in your car, wherever you're going. And it's a nice way to take your study on the road with you on the go. But uh, I do have some mixed feelings about some apps. I'm not going to mention any names, but I've tried some language learning apps before and they can be very helpful. I'm going to say that right off the bat, right at the beginning. They can be very helpful. But I do feel like some apps give you the feeling of progress and success without actually being the most effective way to learn. It's probably, it's just easier to, you know, read a book, watch a video, something like that. But the, a lot of these apps, I feel like they're made to be really bright and colorful and attractive. And you get an answer right and you get all this like confetti and explosions and you feel really good about it, which is nice because it, it does gamify language learning. It makes it into like a game where you feel like you're making progress. But I, I do wonder whether that takes away from the enjoyment of learning in itself. Like, in my opinion, learning a language can be fun without having these flashy apps. And here's an example for you. Like, maybe think about something you learnt on a language learning app, an English learning app. Are you able to recall something and use it in conversation? You know, if you're only using the app to study vocabulary, it might be very hard for you to actually use that in your day-to-day -day life. But, yeah, I don't know. I I'm not demonising it. I'm not saying it's bad. At the moment, I am learning some Bosnian language using one of these kind of mobile apps. I'm, I'm using the desktop version, but it's still a mobile app. And I'm picking up some basic phrases of Bosnian, stravo, vala, um, what else do I know? Yasam engleski. You know, I am English, right? So I'm learning some basic phrases. I'm remembering quite a lot, actually. It's doing quite well. But I think in order to be able to use it, I need to put it into practice, not just use the app. So this Sunday, I've got my very first Bosnian lesson with a teacher on italki. And... 
a little bit nervous, but mostly I'm excited to put my stuff into practice and see how much I've learned. So maybe I'll give you an update on that in the future to see how much of it stuck in my mind in an actual speaking situation. Yeah, and the other thing I suppose I do with my phone is Instagram. I don't use Instagram much, maybe 10 minutes a day, about 10 minutes a day or less. But on my Instagram page, I follow some Japanese language learning accounts. And it's really, really simple. I don't plan to use it much for language learning, but occasionally I'll come on and there will be a Japanese word and an example sentence. And an English translation. And I go, oh, that's so interesting. And it'll just be like a phrase, like, from the top of my head. It'll be like something like that in Japanese. And I feel it's really good for me to find what's useful. But again, I will note it down and I will use it in my language learning lesson. So there's that important crossover there. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. How useful is your smartphone for language learning? Maybe you have some tips for me and other listeners that you could share that would be really good. Or maybe you think it's not a great idea. We should avoid smartphones if possible. Let me know your views. I don't really have a strict view on this, but... Hmm. But yeah, maybe now we can talk about smartphone addiction a little bit. This word addiction is like you cannot stop doing something. It's really bad for you, but you are addicted because it is addicting or addictive, right? So addictive, what we say for things, smartphones are addictive, I am addicted, I have an addiction, noun. Different types of the same word. We could also use the word obsession. It's similar to addiction. Obsession is more like you're crazy about something, you really, really love something, you cannot stop thinking about something. I would say addiction is more like, it's more often used for chemical addiction, right? Like smoking addiction, alcohol addiction. But also I think addiction is worse. Obsession is more about your mind. But obsession, you can have an obsession with a music group. But addicted is more like, maybe it's not a healthy thing, you know? But they're both not great, I suppose. But People are obsessed and addicted to their smartphones these days. I notice it when I'm queuing. This is when it's most obvious to me when I'm queuing to get a coffee. Everyone's on their phone. When I'm sat on the London Underground, everyone's on their phone. And I try not to use my phone, just kind of... I I treat it as like a moment of meditation, just to feel the boredom and observe what's around me and look... Look at people, make them feel awkward, you know? <laughs> I do sometimes use my phone. I'm not going to say I'm perfect, but but I try not to as much as I can. One thing that I've done that I recommend for everyone, I think you have to do this, is turn off all notifications on your phone. That's quite scary, isn't it? For the first day or two, It's quite difficult. You miss the notifications, but after a couple days, your life will be so much better. My phone never buzzes anymore. It never goes and tells me something. There's different settings you can do. So my phone will have notifications on the home page. It will say, uh, for example, you have one message from WhatsApp, you know, but it doesn't notify me. It just comes up on the home page. So I don't know I have a message until I open my phone and look, right? So if someone texts me, they will not get a reply until I bother to check my phone. And it's never caused any problems. I really love it. And, you know, it's good for my work, my focus, my concentration. If I go for a walk, I can go for the entire walk. My phone does not disturb me. And it is One of the best things I've done on my phone. So I recommend that. And you can also have different notification settings for different apps, right? So for example, some apps I've turned off notifications completely, like Instagram. I get so many messages on Instagram that it would drive me crazy. So I have no notifications. I don't know how many messages or comments I have 
until I open the app. Some things like WhatsApp or texts, texting, I have notifications, but I don't know that until I go on my homepage of my phone, right? So different rules you can set up. Take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, set up these rules. Your life will be better, I promise. <laughs> That's also a thing I've heard about though, is not feeling boredom. People say that's a bad thing, that we don't feel boredom anymore. Because now whenever we're bored, we get out our phones. We use our phones out of boredom. That's a good phrase. It means because you are bored, out of boredom. Out of boredom, you pick up your phone, you start scrolling. Yeah, it's a mindless activity. And I don't, I haven't thought much about this, but maybe it's a good point that being bored is not a bad thing. Maybe it's good to be bored. It's good to have some time when your mind is doing nothing or just thinking about things. You know, being bored is not wrong. So maybe that's something to keep in mind. And yeah, I don't know, maybe it's something to think about for yourself. Like when was the last time you felt bored, really bored? Hmm. I don't know when it was for me. I rarely feel bored these days either, but Mm. Sam Harris has a really good quote or thing that he says. And he, he says, um, nothing is boring if you are concentrating enough. Something like that. Like, if you have enough focus, you, you will never be bored. So, for example, you might feel really bored. You're sitting in the waiting room, but then you get really curious and you're looking around. You're looking at the people, looking at maybe thinking about the state of your mind and meditating, and then in that sense, you will not be bored. I guess that's what he means, right? But yeah, I think a lot of us will pick up our smartphones out of habit. Another good phrase there, out of habit. We do it because it's a habit. So we pick up our phone out of habit. We don't really consciously think about what we're doing. And what was it called? The Phantom, let me check what this is called. There's a name, so I'm sure you've had this before. Phantom vibration, maybe? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. So phantom vibration is when your muscle in your leg will twitch, like shake. And you think your phone is notifying you, like giving you a notification, but it doesn't, it's just your muscle. So it's really, really strange. I don't know quite how it happens, but your body is tricking you into thinking you should check your phone. It's the scariest thing ever. It's really creepy. So yeah, maybe just we can just finish with some tips to reduce your smartphone usage. One is what I mentioned about notifications, turn them off completely. Another one is to treat your phone apps kind of like, what else? Clearing out old food in your cupboards or your fridge maybe. If you haven't used an app in the last month or so, get rid of it. Now, you can always download it again, but get rid of it. That's a good way. If there's an app you really are addicted to, like Instagram or Facebook, consider deleting the app and maybe just using the browser version or maybe just using it on your computer instead. Right? I, I try to do that as much as I can. I, I will reply to my Instagram messages on my computer rather than my app. I find it's just easier to spend more time when you're using the app, right? Um, this is a little bit OCD, a bit obsessive for me maybe, but I like to keep all of my apps on one page. So I don't want to have too many apps, like pages and pages and pages. I have one page of apps. I have a couple folders, sure, but I don't have like many pages. So that keeps things somewhat simple for me. One last tip that I want to share that I've been finding quite useful recently. Well, on my phone in particular, it has a magnet a magnet on the back. So I can stick my phone onto my what, kind of tripod, my camera holder, my phone holder, so I can film myself for my YouTube videos. But also, it's just really handy because you can put your phone up on any magnetic surface and uh, it will stick there, it will stick there. So for example, if I'm on the train and I want to watch a video, you know, YouTube video, I can stick my phone on the metal back of the chair in front of me and it's kind of, I can watch a video without using my hands, it's amazing. But what I tend to do when I'm at home, 
I have this like metal frame in my room where I stick my phone uh, in the corner of my room and that's kind of where it stays. So rather than taking my phone with me around the house, my phone stays in this one spot. I try to do this as much as I can. I'm not always perfect at it. But basically my rule is that I have to use my phone in this spot standing up. It's not by a chair. It's not in bed, you know. My phone is always in this spot. So it's really, really difficult to spend too much time on your phone when you have to stand up to use it, right? So something to consider, something you could try as well. But yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys. So please go to levelupenglish.school slash podcast 156. Over halfway to 200 now, amazing. And go to the bottom of the page, leave a comment. Let me know, whatever, share, share your thoughts with me on this topic. Let me know if you have any tips on reducing your phone usage, all that kind of stuff. But yes, I've also got a really exciting episode this Friday as well. So I'm going to be talking about something perhaps healthier than phones, books. It's a much requested topic from you guys to talk, talk about the books I'm reading. So this Friday on the private podcast, I'm going to be hosting a book club you know, on my own, right? But I'm going to be talking about the books I've read so far in 2022 and some of my favourite books, fiction, non-fiction, and maybe there'll be some that you can uh, enjoy as well. But yeah, I'll be sharing my books and what I've learned from them on this Friday on the private episode, private podcast. You can gain access to this by going to the membership. On the website, click the members button, get the private podcast. But okay, let's finish with two reviews from Apple Podcasts and uh, another quote from Instagram to inspire you for the week. So one here from Summer who says, I love this podcast so much. Usually I get bored easily when I listen to a podcast, but yours is totally different. I'm enjoying every second of it. Thank you so much for your effort. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I really, that warms my heart to, to hear that. I really appreciate that. So thank you very much, Summer from Saudi Arabia. Another from Saudi Arabia now, Ryan from, oh, Ryan from Syria. Okay, so Saudi Arabian, um, version of Apple Podcasts, but he says he's from Syria. So Ryan says, hello, Michael. I just want to tell you how much I'm improving from your podcast. You are being one part of my days. One part of my day. I'm going to make the bold assumption and get, say the best part of your day, right? I might be wrong. <laughs> and then he says, thanks for everything with more hearts. Thank you so much. I feel like I don't deserve all this praise, but I'm really happy that the podcast is helping and it does make my day. I'll be happy for the whole day now. So thank you very much. And yeah, okay, let's go to a quote. So today I posted a picture of the famous Gherkin building in London. Very famous. I, I had a good view of it recently. And it's not really related to the quote, but this is a quote from Sam Altman, who said, Hard work compounds like interest. And the earlier you do it, the more time you have for the benefits to pay off. I love this. I love I try to think this way with my language and my work as well. If I work hard today on my language learning or my work, then I'll have more time in my life to enjoy the benefits. It doesn't mean that I'm not enjoying life now, but there's no sense delaying hard work. If you want to work hard on something, start today. I like that quote. Okay, hope it inspired you. Hope you found this episode interesting, but I'll see you very soon for another episode next week. So thanks for listening and bye-bye. Ciao. You have been listening to the Level Up English Podcast. If you would like to leave a question to be answered on a future episode, then please go to levelupenglish.school forward slash 
podcast. That's levelupenglish.school slash podcast. And I'll answer your question on a future episode. Thanks for listening.